Hello, Magnus here. And in today's episode, I kind of want to help all of those who are wondering where, whether they should buy a DSLR or a video camera, you know, what will help you make those buying decisions and basically what helped me make my buying decisions when I was looking to upgrade my equipment and to start taking video production more seriously. Now this video is geared more towards video production less towards photographs so uh, keep in mind that my mindset was geared on videos when my purchases uh, came into play so right now today I'm gonna start with basically walking you through my experiences as you see in this video um, I'm using actually my phone to record this because my first video was done actually with a tablet so a media device is what I wanted to start with these videos on and then kind of upgrade from there so for many years I've been doing videos, take you back 10-15 years I've been doing videos, but for the years that I've been doing videos, I've been doing them semi-professionally for different companies that have wanted it, but always either rented equipment or other people's equipment, and I just kind of learned how to use it real quick, but I was inexperienced. But then I wanted to start to get into my own craft and start using my own equipment and not needing to depend on anyone else and just to act as a... Instead of acting as a camera guy, I wanted to be the director behind the camera and really focus on that. I bought my first HD camera back in, I believe, 2006, and it was a really small handheld Panasonic that recorded directly to SD. And I really started to kind of get into filming in HD, and I actually did a few productions with that little camera, but of course I needed a lot of lighting, and I had my limitations. And again, High definition was kind of a new thing back then, you know, 1920 by 1080. So from there, I wanted to really start to upgrade my equipment and take my profession a lot more seriously, even after I was getting a lot of jobs back then. So the reason I'm recording with my phone right now is because when I started my YouTube page, I started recording using a tablet. But then I really began to upgrade my equipment to do different things, have different type of clients. And the first thing on my mindset is that I wanted to buy a professional video camera now a cousin of mine recommended that uh, why don't you just do a DSLR and I said no no DSLRs are for for pictures I want a real professional video camera for a mid-level budget so I'm gonna take you through that when I went through that I looked at uh, different online sources and I one of my cousins who's actually involved in the video industry said why don't you buy the Canon XA10. That looks like what you're looking for, which will give you good video quality and it's a basic, it's a small but basically well round, well built video camera at least. So I said, okay, let me go for that. It did well, low light performance, and you know, I heard, I heard a lot of positive reviews at the time. So it was around $2,000 when I bought it, and I said, all right, let me do this and let me start taking it seriously. What did my video quality look like? Well, this initial transition will be slightly different because I'm going from a pretty high quality video camera on the phone to the to the actual XA10. So I'm about to switch to the XA10 right now and you'll see what the quality looks like. And this is the XA10. Now the XA10 has a 10 times optical zoom, aperture opens to f-stop 1.8, um, and it had two XLR inputs on the for microphones and it had a pretty small body but pretty versatile. and. I think it did pretty well in low light, but I felt there was something missing. You know, I was looking for something a little bit more, at least movie film-like, and I wasn't getting the same type of performance out of this camera that I just had spent $2,000 over. Now, I was really against DSLRs, but at the same time, I wanted to upgrade my performance within a reasonable budget. So my second camera, I was not gonna get a second XA10. I needed to get something a little bit more adaptable. And because DSLRs were picking up popularity, especially after the, the sensation of 5D Mark II, after it introduced video into a DSLR frame, I had seen a couple of videos online with DSLRs and I said, you know what? Maybe I should make that as my next move and work around the limitations that a DSLR would have. I upgraded. What did I upgrade to? The Canon 6D. Now, I wasn't really educated on how lenses worked. I just wanted something that could pretty much zoom and it had a broad expansion of zoom. Let's see what happened when I upgraded to the 6D. And just like that, 6D. Now, I'm zoomed in a lot because I bought, 
the Canon 6D and a 70 to 300 millimeter lens thinking that I can use that efficiently. I'm at 70 millimeters right now and that's the widest possible angle that I could get out of this lens. So I learned, okay, can't be that drastic with 70 to 300 millimeter lens. Great for zoom, but not great for wide angle shots, which is what I was looking for. But notice the quality of footage that you get off of a DSLR. This is recording at 1080p 30 frames a second and I was just blown away with the not only images and pictures that you can take off of this camera, but the actual video quality that you get when you're recording. I was a little shocked about the 29 minute and 59 second time limit. I wasn't, that wasn't something I was used to. I was used to recording and pretty much not worrying about that. But worrying about that limit was kind of a down and the other down that I struggled with was the fact that the actual microphone to the camera was atrocious. You don't get any decent sound out of it anyway. And holding a uh, DSLR, I found that even when you have the um, image stabilization built in the lens, it still can be quite shaky if you don't have a steady hand or some sort of rig or apparatus or tripod to steady your shot. So that's something that I had to really start to work around. And the XA10 still gave me use, but using this Canon 6D, I can, I can get footage from far and I know that that footage would be great because of the bump up in quality. Now that depth of field I noticed was actually present with this camera where I wasn't getting it, getting it as much with the XA10. And when I did my research, I realized it was the fact that uh, it's not only the lens quality, but it's also the fact that you have all the different f-stops that contribute to that and a larger sensor. And that's what really takes off is the fact that you're able to gather more light. And when you gather that more light, you tend to make your depth of field more shallow. And when you get that shallow look, it's awesome. But I'm not sure if you can tell if I'm recording this now. I tried to focus as well as I could, but the inability to autofocus while recording video was a huge challenge and a huge frustration, which I didn't have with the XA10. So I had to take that into consideration at the time. When I'm recording something, I had to be a pro when it comes to manual focus. Because if you're not able to get those shots that you need because you're always out of focus, that can be hugely frustrating. So keep that in mind, depending on what camera body you get. If you do go for DSLR, I recommend, and I cannot recommend enough, that you get one with a great autofocus system during video because that will help immensely. But again, when I bought this camera, great for video quality, I'm playing around with it a lot, but then I'm kind of frustrated because I can't take a picture or, or record video without backing up heavily. So what was the next thing I should do? I thought, you know what? Buying a lens and the right glass matters, especially when you're recording video. So I read somewhere that 35 millimeter prime lens would be the sweet spot when it comes to recording video. So let's switch the lens, but keep the camera the same and see what happens. Ready? Here we go. And here we are. 35 millimeters. All I can say is that with this, I got the wide angle that I needed for most situations. And if I wanted to zoom in on something, I had to put my feet to work and really get up close whenever that was necessary, which meant for a lot of filming productions, especially with a lot of weddings, I had to get up right in your face if I was going to get close up. And most of the time, I was pretty much getting a far, zoomed out, wide angle of everything. More, much more versatile. I could get a lot more with this lens than I could with the other zoom lens when it came to just capturing everything in the scene. However, I started to notice that the times were progressing, times were changing, and 4K popularity was picking up. I myself wanted to get than a new camera body. I wanted to look into a camera body that can handle 4K and can handle it efficiently. At this point, I was not looking into an actual video camera or adopting that. Again, the C300, for example, or any of those much more expensive video cameras, actually, I was starting to get turned off by them because with a DSLR, I can adapt it to a way that I could get it to work with a huge affordability advantage because 
anything I wanted, I could just attach to the camera or make the camera do versus an expensive video camera that I might not find as useful and not get the same video quality for the price. Sure, the, the more you pay it, the tens of thousands of dollars, the better you get. So DSLR image quality was doing it for me. However, there were a couple of things that I wanted to go for to upgrade my experience. And what did I do? I looked into uh, 4K cameras, specifically opening the, the gamut, not just full frame, but looking at Panasonic, which offered their GH4 camera, which was very popular. And then of course, the Samsung NX1. When I was looking, those were the two that I was looking at for image quality. I went to CES in 2015 and got my first look at the Samsung NX1. I am a Samsung employee, so I did have somewhat of a bias towards the Samsung camera. However, I would refuse to get one if I couldn't get a similar or much better image quality than I could off of my 6D, which is a full frame camera. I was in a, uh, kind of in the field of if it's not full frame, it's not for me. And NX1 was a APS-C camera the GH4 was a micro four thirds camera. I didn't, and for me, smaller sensors just weren't coming for me. Mirrorless, I didn't care, but the smaller sensor was just not what I wanted. But then I saw the image quality of the NX1 and I was just blown away. And the fact that you can pull stills out of the 4K and print them at very large print formats was amazing for me. So at that point, I made the decision. I'm going to get my hands on the Samsung NX1 and improve my quality. I bought it with a very cheap kit lens and I wanted to see what I can get out of a lens before I just started to buy an alternative lens, which I had my eye on an internal lens. But 4K, I had to have my hands on 4K and improve the image quality. So without further ado, let's go from full frame, 60, 1080p quality to 4K on uh, the H.265 video format and see how that competes with the Canon image quality. NX1, 4K footage. I've got hooked up to it, the power zoom lens. The lens, to me, I wasn't impressed with. I could honestly tell you that both of the 6D lenses impressed me more than the NX1 did. So it almost seemed like, did I downgrade or is this just the lens thing? Is it the fault of the smaller sensor? I don't know. But the camera actually got me to start to fall in love with it. First is that the fact that you can record, as I've mentioned before, you can record and actually stream the video as you're recording so you can frame, focus, and it does autofocus while doing video, so that's another plus. And then this particular lens that I had with it, as I'm clicking around on this, can do one thing, and that was, look, zoom in and out while recording and remotely through the phone, which to me, that was just an amazing plus. So this camera, higher quality, let me just get a, one of the best quality lenses for it. And I think, I think I had a winner here. So 4K was where it was at. So just because it's APS-C does not mean that you can't get great footage out of that. And APS-C is pretty close to super 35 millimeter, which is what many, many of today's video cameras use for film quality production. For me, that was just a huge plus. So of course, lens, it's all about the glass, right? When I upgraded the glass and put it from a 16 to 50 millimeter power zoom lens to the actual two to 2.8 zoom S lens for Samsung. Here we go. And I don't know if you can tell, but this new lens that I bought for it has the same focal length. F-stop goes from two to 2.8 and it's one of the highest quality lenses that Samsung offered. I can honestly say that when I got this lens, I was like, okay, now I'm ready to film. I also got a 50 to 150 2.8 zoom lens for this camera as well. And both lenses just blew me away. And then I could say, wow, not only is this competition for my 6D, but this is also better quality than my 6D due to the ability to record 4K in the H.265 file format. So files were very well compressed and the quality was just unbeatable and unmatchable by my 6D. 
And I noticed that I was actually using this camera much more than my 6D when I started to move on because of the unbeatable resolution and image quality that you can get once you upgrade to a 4K quality. So this camera blew me away. Wasn't as well as low light, I can honestly tell you. The 6D did much better in low light situations than the NX1 because of the larger sensor and, and its abilities to absorb more light in. However, the NX1 was still great when it came to use of color and the natural look when you would actually um, film and that higher resolution was just a bump for me. So now, got a couple of lenses on the NX1, got a 6D, I seem to be all set. But I was needing a 4K Canon camera and I was craving that. Even though I was not too excited about the file format that they were going to use for 4K, Regardless, I wanted to jump to that camera and it was much more pricier. So I did have alternatives that I could have shot to. But with Canon, I already had lenses. I bought uh, the 24 to 70 zoom lens. So I wanted to use that and use it with the 5D Mark IV. So what did the final upgrade look like? Well, here we go. Let's show you what 5D Mark IV looks like. And obviously from this point, you can tell that I was totally hooked to DSLRs. I was not looking into expensive video cameras anymore, although I will in the future, but for the practicality purposes and for image quality that you get, DSLRs made sense. So here we go with my next and most recent purchase for DSLRs. And here we are with the 5D Mark IV. 4K recording, unfortunately with that codec and then it reduces because it only uses a part of the sensor, you're getting, you know, 1.7 times crop on your glass, whatever glass you've got on it. However, the image quality bar none made it worth me purchasing a couple of uh, larger and faster cards to be able to support it. So all in all, what this experience has taught me is that equipment isn't all that you need. I honestly use all of my cameras from the XA10 to the 5D Mark IV in different occasions. So having the ability to be flexible was first priority and it was definitely something that was a learning process. As I learned the difference between sensor sizes, lens choices, and of course, what type of body you have to record your footage, whether it be a DSLR or a video camera. That decision is based on up to you, what bodies you get and your experiences that you have. So your opinions might be more than different from mine and I completely understand that. I'm just telling you what worked for me and basically what was out there. Now when, when shopping today, you can get competitive pricing on both video cameras and DSLRs at between the thousand to two thousand dollar mark and be satisfied with what you have but at least if you know what you're looking for i hope this video showed you exactly what affects what and how the changes the differences and whether you have a smaller sensor larger sensor type of camera that you have what that'll pretty much teach you so and what how that will affect your footage and what you're trying to get out of it because the most important thing of the day is that when you're trying to do a production, you get out of it what you were looking for as an artist. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them for me. Um, hit that like button. And to be quite honest, you guys are my inspiration for doing these videos. I love to do them. That's the first thing. But the second thing that comes into play in, is that people watch them, people like them, because of course, because of course, if you're gonna do a production, you want it to be seen by people. And uh, that means a lot. So shout out to all of you that keep on subscribing and watching my videos. I'm gonna keep them coming at least once a week when I can. And finally, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus and I'm out. And that outro goes to anyone who hasn't subscribed and those who have subscribed who just got used to me saying that. In any case, take care, watch the videos, hit that subscribe, I'm out.